Hi guys, this is Nitin, and in this video, I am going to talk about optical character recognition using large vision language models. So, I have been trying to train some OCR models from some time, and the problem with uh, standard OCR model is that they tend to follow some simple approach which fails in many scenarios. For example, the simplest OCR model which I tried to train a couple of years ago called CRNN. So what it does is basically it takes an image and then it tries to predict the labels directly which means the image can only contain the characters and nothing else and the more clear your image is the more better chance you have to get a proper recognition. But that thing is highly susceptible to noise and uh, mostly fails if you have multi-line characters or large characters. Then there are so many other models which got released eventually over time which I tried for example Seam was one of those which is a scenic uh, text detection and recognition and the most uh, famous one which I do remember is uh, Easy OCR and Paddle OCR. So these were great and uh, the way they work is basically they will detect each and every word in the image and then uh, maybe each character as well and then try to recognize it and uh, these were like full SDKs and worked very well but uh, often time training them was a challenge because you need quite a lot of data to train that and uh, mostly it requires you to uh, annotate the bounding boxes around the words as well as the text label for those words and bounding boxes so that is tedious to annotate as well so I've been uh, searching for various other methods and uh, now because uh, these uh, vision language models started to gain traction so there have been some new progress in this field as well and I wanted to explore that. So today I'm going to talk about Florence 2 which is released by Microsoft. It is a multi-capability vision language model and can do a lot of stuff. For example it can uh, detect objects, it can uh, caption images, it can segment objects, it can also do perform OCR on the images and uh, what's cool is even if there are a lot of noise or a lot of text you can still guide it to extract particular piece of information from the image but uh, oftentimes these uh, LLMs uh, hallucinate or are not very reliable based on what you want to extract out so the best course of uh, action here is to train them so that you can guide them properly on to how to extract particular information from the image so uh, today I am going to just uh, talk about Florence 2 first and then we will talk about the OCR capabilities and how we can train our own OCR model using this so that you get a reliable uh, OCR model with up to 90% accuracy. So here on my screen you can see I had opened this Florence 2 uh, notebook. This is an inference notebook which talks about uh, how you can do multiple kind of inference using this model. And what's cool is this is a very smaller model compared to other uh, models. This is only 0 0.2 billion parameters model and uh, only takes like 1 GB VRAM to load. And then if you want to process more images, it might take more VRAM. But uh, it's generally okay and if you have a 20 GB VRAM GPU card in your system, you can easily train it locally. People have often get some success training it on Google Colab as well. So here in this notebook, if you see, there is a function defined called run, run example. And basically, this is a wrapper function. What it does is it takes your task prompt. That is what kind of task you want the model to perform. And then some prompt for that task using this text input uh, parameter and uh, also an image to run that. So uh, here they are using this sample image and uh, so the very first task that they have done is called captioning. So remember this task prompt, this is something which was uh, used during the training. So this is how a model understand what kind of task you want the model to perform for. So uh, this caption keyword here uh, with these uh, brackets and closing it uh, tells that whenever you pass an image and this task prompt, the image will try to caption the image. So it says a green car parked in front of a yellow building. Then there is detailed caption which gives you more detailed caption in the image and then there is more detailed caption so people were like absolutely crazy about getting more and more out of the model so they had like implemented these three stages 
where you can pass to get more granularity in terms of how the model perceive the image and explain it next up in the task we have od which is object detection once you pass an image and this task prompt what it does is it will give you a json format bonding boxes along with uh, all the detected objects that it can see in the image so you can see the there is a helper function here as well which uh, extract this json information and then plots the bonding boxes and it is uh, detecting wheels car door other things and then there is dense region caption um, which is basically if the, you have very densely packed objects in the image it will try to detect those now comes region proposal so region proposal is similar to object detection but uh, what it does is basically it will propose a region that could be an object of interest but it will not label what kind of object is that so could be very useful when you want to just propose what are the uh, object that you can de detect and then there is caption to phrase grounding where you can uh, pass a text prompt that is like a green car parked in front of a yellow building and then based on this text prompt it will try to detect an object and there are other things like referring expression segmentation which gives you segmentation mask and then region to segmentation where you pass a region as a prompt and then it will give you a mask to that region similar to how sam works where you pass a point but here it can take text prompt and then give you a segmentation mask and then there is open vocabulary detection where you provide a lot of uh, dictionaries uh, with what we want to detect and then it will try to detect that now comes the interesting part so we have a use case here where the task prompt is ocr so basically you can pass this task prompt and then the model will try to recognize the text in that there is also another advanced feature here which is ocr with region uh, using which the model can not only recognize the image in the uh, text in the image but it can also give you the bounding boxes for those texts so could be very very helpful um so there are a lot more things here and if you want to see the full capability of this model you can go to this uh, florence 2 card and uh, here is a table um, somewhere which talks about the different capabilities of the model so anyhow our purpose here is to train our OCR model and that too we don't want to annotate the bounding boxes we just want to pass in the text label that you want to recognize in the image and model should be able to take care of all of those things so for this task i am going to use a very simple data set with a very less number of images actually to train it quickly uh, this is called energy meter data set so if i go here um, and if i show you some examples so this is what the image looks like uh, this is quite huge but uh, basically this is a energy meter which uh, tracks your usage in kilowatt hour and our focus is to get the model to read this main uh, kilowatt reading from the meter now if you go to the data set preparation notebook you will see that i already have this function which downloads the sample data set from hugging face and it is already annotated so that you can try it out yourself and talking about the data set structure so this is how it looks like you will have this data set root directory inside which you have train and well directories and inside each of these directories you will have image uh, jpeg file and then you have a text file for that jpeg image and text file basically contains the text label for that image that you want to model to uh, predict and if you have your own data set you want to annotate it and then train it so i have a very simple fast api based application which you can use and you can see it here so basically uh, if i show you the code you yeah, have this static directory where inside you create an image directory and put all the images and uh, when you load this application you will see this text box here where you can put in any text label you want to label this image with and then you just simply press next it will automatically create a text file for you and uh, you can also use this to validate your labels so this is how uh, i annotated other data set for my use case and uh, after this you can upload your data set here 
uh, into this directive with this format uh, make sure that you split your data into train and well sets and uh, once this is done uh, we can move on to model training so i have this notebook prepared here this is and uh, for the dependencies uh, i forgot to tell you uh, i have this uh, docker compose file which you can find in the github repository which you can use to run the application and uh, this will uh, basically set up your environment as well as mount the gpu inside your docker container so for model training what you have is um, we can import the set of uh, modules uh, let me just do it for now and then uh, I have this uh, data set class defined here which reads your image as well as text files from the disk and uh, the collate function so to merge it and uh, using this what happens is you will have your data set prepared for training I mean data loader from PyTorch uh, here what I'm doing is I'm using the default base fine tuning model from hugging face and once this model is loaded I have an inference function here defined again uh, for simplicity and we can check the model output right now how it performs all right so as you can see right now this is the default model which is not fine-tuned yet and you can see it is able to extract a lot of information from this image uh, whatever text it is seeing it is able to extract that and print out here for us but what we are interested in reading this uh, uh, main uh, kilowatt hour usage units and not the other text in the image so either we can prompt the model to extract only the meter values but uh, it sometimes fails and even if you see it is not properly reading these numbers so uh, 14054 while it is 4059 and uh, i think here also it mixed things so it's not able to understand what needs to be extracted so we're going to train the model tell it the exact uh, text that we want this model to focus on and it should be able to ignore other text as well as uh, properly extract the information so uh, i have this uh, train model function defined here as well and one thing you will uh, notice here is in the same model i am modifying this config path because there is some bug with transformers where it is not able to load the same model unless the model type is defined as davit while this model when saved to disk is defined as florence so i have to override these configuration during model weights uh, snapshot so that we are able to load it directly and uh, once you do this i i had trained this model for like 50 epochs so uh, i am not going to run the training right now even though i can and uh, what i will do is basically i will load the pre-trained weights or all the trained weights which i had trained previously so i'm going to just go here and then copy this part and uh, instead of this default model i will just use the model weight which i trained and uh, in the weights directory you will see there are two files model best and model latest so you may get an idea what this contains so basically instead of saving the weights for each and every puck what i do is i check the uh, validation loss and if the loss decreases over time i keep on updating the model best directory and whatever the current model is being trained that is saved to model latest directory so model best is what we want to load so i will load this model and now let's try to predict on same set of images and see how it performs so you can see now that in the same image it is now able to focus on to the meter readings and is able to extract that text so it no longer focuses on other text in the image by the way even the image is not very clear and model was still able to read that so that's already a very capable model and the interesting thing is if you have a very complex data set where you have multiple lines of text or occluded text and or uh, some characters are large some characters small 
and it does not make sense to read for the model directly if the alignment is not properly in the image for the words but if you pass a proper text label the model is able to figure out those mappings and it is still able to recognize the characters or words that you want to recognize into that image it works with like uh, punctuation spacing all of those things so this is what the model uh, trained and i had previously run this uh, uh, accuracy calculation uh, on training and validation data set that you can see it goes up to like 90 percent accuracy for validation data set and almost 100 percent for train set but this is a smaller data set so it is kind of like achieving that but if you have a very large data set uh, it the accuracy may be a little bit lower for training and validation sets but all in all this is very good I had certainly trained for multiple data set um, which had around 1000 images for testing purposes and then 45,000 images and it has been performing really really good for me so if you want a reliable model although this is not as fast as compared to other ready to use OCR models but if you want something which you can quickly train and get a very good accuracy I think this is one of those models which you can keep so uh, this was all about the using Florence 2 for OCR and uh, I had linked the repository in the description you can go and check that out and uh, we have seen that Florence 2 is capable of, of a lot of things so in the future I will try to explore more capabilities and try to come up with some code to do that so that's all for this video thank you and please keep interacting with the videos please drop a comment uh, do like so that this boosts the engagement with the video and youtube tries to push it to more people so i get to uh, reach to more people like you